Hey Falcons, Miss Littlefield here. Now this message is for my fourth graders. Normally by this time of the year, I would have come into your class and we would have had a talk about Dillingham. I would have asked you things like, what are you concerned about? Do you have any questions? Are you afraid of anything? You know, what's going on? And we would have answered all those questions. Now, in all of my years of doing this, the number one thing that kids are the most concerned about is the combination locks that are on the lockers. They're, they're afraid that they're not going to have enough time going in between classes. Okay, you will have enough time. You're fine. The first few weeks of school, they give you some grace because they know you're learning how to work it. And normally what I would do is I would bring a class set of locks with me we would go through the steps. I'd put a lock in your hand and let you practice. Obviously, we can't do that. But what I am going to do today is tell you what the steps are, do a little demo, and then if you'll listen to it and pay attention to it, also on my website, I'm gonna put the links to some um, really good videos that also show how to do a combination lock that I would have shown in classroom. And if you, if you have a lock laying around that you can practice with, that would be great. Do not go out and buy a lock. You cannot use your own lock at Dillingham. You have to use their locks. Okay, but once you know the steps, you can open any lock. It doesn't matter. So if you'll just learn the steps once you get to Dillingham, even if that's the first time you've ever opened a lock, you'll still be able to do it. Okay? So, step number one. Let's see if I can hold this up here where y'all can read it. Step number one says that we clear the lock by turning it clockwise at least two times. And then we're gonna stop on our very first number. So we have to clear the lock at least two times before we can stop on our first number. Okay, now you're thinking, what does clear the lock mean? That's kind of weird. All clear the lock means is you're just going to turn it, just randomly turn it, and then you're just going to stop on your first number. Do not stop on zero. A lot of people think they have to start at zero. No. If I do this and then I stop at zero, I just told my lock that my first number is zero. And you know what? My first number, I don't know if you could see that, is 22. So is my lock going to open? No, locks don't have very big brains. Okay, so clear your lock and stop on your first number. What's my first number? 22, you're right. So I'm gonna clear and we'll stop right at 22. Okay, so now we're ready for step two. Now step two tells us that we are going to turn the dial counterclockwise and we have to make sure that we go past our first number before we can stop on our second number. That is so important, I underlined it. You have to pass your first number before you can stop on your second number. Why is that so confusing, you ask? I'll tell you. Because you're always going to go, you're always going to see your second number before you pass your first number and you're gonna think, oh, there it is, I need to stop. But you can't do that. So remember, our first number is 22. On this lock, our second number is 30. So now I'm gonna go counterclockwise, but when I do that, 30 is right there. I'm gonna be right there. But I gotta remember, I can't stop because I have to pass 22. So we're gonna turn it, oh, there's 30, but I can't stop. I'm going to go to tw past 22. Now I can stop at 30. And now we're ready for step three. Step three tells us to turn the dial clockwise until you reach your third number. Okay, so it's kind of like in uh, Monopoly when it says don't pass go and don't collect your $200. Okay, same thing. Don't worry about anything. Go straight to your number. Now, once you get there, your lock's not going to magically open. You're going to have to pull on the lock to make it open. So,
so we were at 30, okay? And so this third number is 36. So now I'm gonna go straight to 36. And I know you can't see that. I've got it on the demo here in a minute. And if we did it right, it should open. And you should hear that magical, wonderful little click. Okay, now here in a minute, you're gonna see a video where I talk about the locks, talk about some things that people do wrong or how to fix a mistake if you made it, which basically just means you gotta start over. But the hardest thing to remember is you've got to go the right direction and you've got to pass that first number before you can stop at your second number. Okay, so you've got to go clockwise or to the right, counterclockwise and then clockwise. Here's another way to kind of think about it. Okay, so you're going to clear the lock going that direction. Okay. Then you're gonna go the opposite direction, past your first number, and then stop at your second number. And from there, you're gonna go back the other direction and go straight to your third number. And then you're gonna pull, and hopefully it's going to open. So if you'll remember those three rules, and you can even draw a lock or just practice or something, but like I said before, don't go out and buy one, but just try to learn those three um, rules. Watch the videos that I put links up on my website. If you don't remember my website, it's just, um, if you go to uh, Fairview and then go to where it says parents and then click on counselor's corner, then you will see uh, my website and I'll put a little thing on there that says locks for fourth grade and that's where I will put the videos that are from YouTube and then also my videos okay now back to questions about Dillingham because then a lot of you may have questions some of you have older brothers and sisters that have gone that can tell you things some of you don't if you have any questions your fifth grade counselor's name is Miss Roberts Okay, and you can email her with any questions that you have. She's super nice. You're really going to like her. And she will answer any questions. And so here is her information. Miss Roberts, she's your fifth grade counselor. And her email address is roberts because her first name's Rebecca, roberts at shermanisd.com. Net. Okay, so that's R Roberts at ShermanISD.net. I will also put her email address on that locks tab on my website. If you email her, just say, Hey, I'm a fourth grader. I'm coming to Dillingham from Fairview. I have some questions. And she'll be happy to answer anything that you need. If you don't feel comfortable emailing her, feel free to email me and I'll get you the answer too. I'm gonna miss you so much. And I want you to remember that once you're a Fairview Falcon, you are always a Fairview Falcon. Love you, bye bye. Okay, so now that we've talked about the steps, let's see what it would actually look like when we use it with a lock. Okay, so we're gonna use this lock. We're gonna look at four. This one happens to have a little red line, and that's what we're gonna be lining our numbers up with. Okay, so the combination on this one is 3408. So that's gonna be my first number, my second number, and my third number. All right, so remember the first thing I have to do is I have to clear the lock. So I'm just gonna turn it a couple of times. Boop, bitty, boop. Okay, and we're going to go to 34. And I'm lining up the red line with the number 34. Okay, now my second number is 0. Now I have to go the other direction and look where 0 is. It's right there, but I can't stop. Remember, I have to pass my first number. And if I stop right there, I'm not going to pass it. So I have to go, oops, there's my zero, but I can't stop. 
Okay, there's 34, so now I've passed it. Now I can stop at zero. And my last number, I just go straight to the number. I don't have to worry about anything. So I'm just gonna go, there's eight. If I did it right, it will open. Okay, so there's one lock. Let's look at this one. This one is 22, 30, 36. So what's the first thing I do? That's right, I have to clear my lock. So I'm just gonna clear my lock and I'm going to go to 22. There's 22, I've lined it up. Now on this one, there's not a red line. It's just a, it's, there's a line, but it doesn't have any color on it. Okay, so after 22, my number is 30. I'm gonna go the other direction and I have to pass 22. Now I'm gonna see 30 and I'm gonna think, oh yay, there's my number. But remember, I can't stop. I have to pass 22 before I can go to 30. So we're gonna go around. There's 22. Now I can stop on 30. And then my last number is 36. And remember, I can just go straight to it and I'm gonna be going the opposite direction. Okay, so here we go. Stop at 36. If I did it right, it'll open. Now you're gonna to have to pull on it to make sure that you open it. Now one thing I wanna ask you is, when I was doing that, Oliver, when I was doing my lock, did I twist my arms around and become a little human pretzel? No, because you're not gonna be able to do that. You've gotta get used to just moving your dial. Okay, because this is going to be attached to a locker and you won't be able to move your lock. You've just gotta be able to move the dial. Now, if I go super fast, I'm gonna mess up. So I wanna take my time, make sure I line up my numbers right. If for some reason I mess up, so let's just say, remember our first number is 22. Let's just say I'm clearing my lock and uh-oh, I went to 18. Can I just back it up to 22? No, because then I just told my lock two different numbers that aren't even part of my combination. So I would have to start all over, clear it, stop at 22, then remember I have to pass 22 to go to 30, and then go straight to my last number, which is 36. And it opened. Now, did you notice it didn't open the first time I pulled it? Sometimes you have to pull a little bit harder. Okay, let's look at a different lock. This one is 29, 18, 25. And this one also doesn't have any color. It just has a little indentation. It also has a circle right there. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not sure what kind of lock you're gonna have on your locker. It may have a color on it like that, or it may just be blank. That's why I'm showing you several different ones. Okay, so this one is 29, 18, 25. So remember, clear it first. Now notice how I'm clearing it, how it looks like the numbers are going backwards because I am going clockwise, I'm going this way. Okay, so my number should be going backwards. So I'm gonna stop at 29. Now I'm gonna go the opposite direction to the number 18. So can I stop right on 18? Good job, no, I have to make sure that I pass 29 first. So here we go, there's my 18, but I can't stop. I gotta pass 29, there's 29. Now I can stop at 18. And do I get to go straight to my third number? You guys are so smart, yes. I'm gonna go straight to 25. And hopefully, yay, we lined them up right and we did the right thing. Now, if your lock won't open, probably you either didn't pass your first number or you went the wrong direction for something. Those are the two most common mistakes. Some people start off going this way. You're supposed to go this way. 
it's like your thumb is going on top. This way is called counterclockwise. This way is clockwise. So it's that way, then that way, then that way. So that's the hardest thing is going the right direction and making sure that you pass your first number. Let's look at one more lock. Now this one's kind of unique. This is 23, 5, 15, but look at the way they wrote the five. It's a zero and a five. So if I'm doing my lock and I go 23, zero, five, and then 15, nope, because locks only have three numbers. And if I said 23, zero, five, 15, I'm telling my lock four numbers and it will never, never open. So what I have to do is just remember that zero five is the exact same thing as five. So this is 23, five, 15. Okay, let's give it a try. Oh, this one has a red triangle on it. Okay, so we're gonna clear our lock. We're gonna stop at 23. Okay, then we're gonna go back and remember our number's five, it's not zero five. I'm gonna pass it, but I can't stop because I have to pass 23. So there's my five, but I'll have to come back and visit you in a minute, little dude. There we go, there's five. And then my last number is 15. I can go straight to it, stop and pull. So hopefully that helped you see what it actually looks like. The best thing that's going to help you, though, is to actually get a lock in your hand and practice. So if you have a lock at home already, see if you can practice with it. Don't go out and spend money to buy a lock. It's not going to be that complicated once you get to school. If you'll just learn the steps and remember, clear it first, then stop straight on your first number. Make sure you pass that first number and then stop on your second number, go straight to your third number. If you'll learn those steps, then that will help you with your lock. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is another very, very common mistake. A lot of people think they have to start on zero. Okay, so they'll line it up at zero. And then they'll clear their lock and they'll line it up at zero. And then they'll try to go to their first number. Well, if you have just cleared your lock and you stopped at zero, what did you just tell that lock was your first number? Zero. Well, remember this lock's first number is 23. Is that lock gonna open? No. You do not have to start at zero. You don't have to stop at zero unless that's one of your numbers like we did on our first lock. Actually did have a zero. Okay, so don't worry about zero. That doesn't make any difference unless it's actually a part of your combination. Just go, 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 and stop at your first number, whatever that number is. Okay, now, another thing that people think they have to do is they think they have to mash this. Okay, when I mashed it just then, did you notice it moved? Okay, if you mash your lock, it could cause this to move and give you the wrong number. Also, am I holding this down, this part down? No, you don't have to do that. Some people think they have to hold it down. Nope, all you have to do is worry about moving your dial. So just remember, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. You could think about it like my thumb's kind of going on top, my finger's going on top, my thumb's going on top. And you know what, that made me think of something else. Some people try to clear their lock like this, if you just go back and forth like that, that's not gonna clear your lock. You have to go completely in circles all the way around the correct direction. So remember, clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise. So if you'll remember those, it will help you be successful in opening your locket, Dillingham.